In the next step, we're going to uh, create a new object. And this new object uh, is not going to have these manually, manual links set. Uh, this is going to search the whole world and uh, it's going to trigger the jump on each one of them. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a new blueprint and I'm going to call it BP underscore uh, uh, ball bouncer bounce manager, for example. Uh, and I'm going to say that the uh, there's going to be a cone here. Here we go, just so that we see it. And I'm going to drag it here into the world. So this, uh, we're not going to do anything with the visuals of it. I'm just going to make it so that we can see it here. All right. So uh, basically the goal here, if we press play again, we can see these two balls here uh, fall. So what we want to do is we want to, uh, we want to make something here on this cone or on our manager that makes all of the, uh, all of these uh, actors actually bounce. So let's go in here. So uh, it's not going to be practical for us to create the, the variables here uh, and link them together. Uh, you can have tens, even hundreds of, uh, of the bouncing balls in the scene. So we need to make a little bit of logic uh, to figure out, uh, kind of, we need to find all of these references, all of the bouncing balls in the scene. And the way that we do that is, uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it on uh, begin play because we uh, we already learned how to do the uh, the events on the event dispatchers uh, on the events. Uh, I'm gonna do a custom event and I'm gonna call it bounce all the balls, and I'm gonna say call an editor. So now uh, now that I've done that, nothing really happens, but I get this button here, uh, bounce all the balls. All right. So uh, it's actually quite simple. Uh, you call a blueprint function called get all actors of class. So this is going to return all of the actors of a set class. So uh, in our example here, we're going to be looking at the uh, we're going to look at the BP underscore bouncing ball. So we want uh, when we do uh, bounce all of the balls, we want to get a reference of all of the bouncing balls in the scene. So you can see that uh, when we were working here with the variable, uh, if we take a look at the bouncing ball again, you can see that this is a like a flat long icon here. Uh, but what this here is returning is the uh, is an array. So this means that um, you can, uh, so this is a list or uh, of all of the bouncing balls. Because this could be one, it could be zero, or it could be thousands. Uh, so we don't, we don't really know. But uh, but the cool thing here is uh, I think we can do uh, do uh, no we can't do that so uh, we need to uh, let's just start by um, uh, by just taking a look at some some really kind of basic things here so the, because this is an array uh, we have a couple of we first have to fetch the stuff that's inside of the array or the list so we want to say we can do get so the get is going to tell us uh, it's going to give us the the first uh, kind of index of the array. So if in our case, for example, we have two balls here, uh, and this means that we're going to get a list of two items and the list is going to be, uh, you're going to get, because lists in uh, programming, most programming languages start at zero. So index zero is going to be entry one, and then index one is going to be entry two. So uh, we're going to get a list with two entries. And because I did get, I said, I want to get uh, the uh, my actor, uh, the bouncing ball uh, at zero. And now you can see that I have a, kind of a single output here. And now I can do, do the jump. Because, uh, and the reason this works is that we said here, get all of the bouncing balls uh, in, the, in the scene. So it's going to give us the same type of uh, variable reference as we had in the, uh, in the one here, uh, the bouncing ball one here. And this is why we can use it uh, to call the function directly. So let's see what happens here. So now basically what we've done is that we've created a button that's going to be callable in the editor. We want to fetch and we want to get a list of all of the actors in the world uh, that are of the type bouncing ball. We're going to get the first uh, kind of one that we find at index zero and we want to tell the one at index zero that we want them to do the jump. So uh, we go back to simulate here, we pick our manager or our triangle here and we go bounce all the balls which is not the correct thing right now but uh, you can see when I press it it bounces all of the balls. Uh, so you can see that uh, we didn't make any any link between them uh, between them here like we did on the uh, uh, on the balls here. 
but uh, but basically we just created logic inside of the uh, uh, inside of the manager here or inside of this actor that got does whenever we call the the function when we have, ever we uh, trigger the logic uh, we say okay before we do anything we need to find the uh, every single kind of instance of the actor here okay so and we can uh, we can switch this around we can do the first one uh here and if i bounce the ball here you can see i get the second one but this is just a coincidence that, that this works uh because there's no way for uh for us to know when the list here is created there's no way for us to know what's going to be the first one and what's going to be the second one this is just a coincidence that uh, it happened like this here so uh, i wouldn't uh like you shouldn't rely on that but all right so uh, so now we've done that i'm gonna remove this here but the logic that we wanted was uh maybe just to show so maybe we're doing some ball bouncing game and i just duplicate these i have a bunch of these here i'm moving them around so uh, now it's definitely not kind of uh, practical. So there's a bunch of them. And I like when I start the game, I don't know how many of them there are. Uh, I start the game, all of them fall here. And now I want my manager to bounce all of them. So uh, the way I do that is I go back into the bouncing manager blueprint here. Uh, and I'm going to do a, a for loop. So there are a couple of ways to do this, but I, uh, I like the for loop. Uh, the for each loop is a note. Basically, what this does is that it takes the array and it allows me to do an action on every single one of these uh, of one of the instances in the list. So if the list is two objects, it's going to do uh, it's going to execute this once and then it's going to execute it twice. So uh, the same way we just do the uh, we just see what comes out of this here. Uh, this is a reference to the bouncing ball object. I'm going to do two the jump here we go we plug this in here so now it's going to run through every single actor uh that we found so get all actors of class is something like find all of the actors uh, that we found and then for each one of the actors that we found do an action so the loop body uh, triggers the action and uh, the ra element is the um kind of the object that we found and it's also important to note that this happens uh, all the time it's not like it doesn't uh, like it all happens all at once so it will just uh so we can just take a look at this here so we start here and now here on the uh, uh on the triangle i do bounce all of the balls so you can see that they're not doing it one at a time or anything like that it just takes all of these commands and pushes all of these commands into the uh uh yeah pushes all of these commands together Cool. So, uh, so now we've basically figured out how we can um, uh, how we can make uh, information, uh, how we can do uh, find all of the objects here. And now uh, something interesting that we can do here on the bouncing ball, we can we can even add some more properties uh, to make this uh, kind of more interesting. I can make a new variable here, and I can do a boolean variable, uh, and I can call my boolean variable uh, nobody tells me when to jump so now i've created a boolean value a true or false value uh, called nobody tells me when to jump and i can have it so that uh, this is uh, instance editable as well here we go so now here in the bouncing ball manager uh, when we loop over each one of the uh, each one of the bouncing balls that we find we can also go here into the array element and we can say uh get nobody tells me when to jump and then i can make a branch and i can say if this is a ball where nobody tells me when to jump i'm not gonna do anything i'm gonna print a message say saying sorry i'll leave you alone but if uh it's not then it's fine with us telling it to jump uh, and i really like uh, making it clear like this uh, we just tell it to do the jump so uh so now we've added this property on our actor here uh called nobody tells me when to jump and it's false by default on all of them so now we say bounce all of the balls and these two at the front here i'm gonna pick the two at the front and i'm gonna tell them nobody tells me when to jump 
So now uh, we go back to the manager and we bounce all of the balls and you can see that uh, nothing happens. And here we can see on the screen that there are two balls here that are that print out. Sorry, I'll leave you alone. Uh, but yeah, so uh, so this is the uh, maybe the kind of the basics of how you can kind of get a reference to actors in the scene. Uh, you can get all of the actors in the scene and then you can create some filter uh, like with the Boolean that we made. And now you can send a message from one uh, manager uh, or you, whatever actor. So this doesn't have to be a manager. You can do it wherever. But this is a, an example of how you can actually push this. Uh, uh, yeah, kind of get all of the actors in the world and uh, send a message to them.